Hi, welcome to today's knitting proficiency tutorial. Today we're going to talk about striped knitting, specifically helical striped knitting. Um, just a couple things that I need to tell you before we get into the actual tutorial. One is helical knitting is kind of a misnomer. Anytime you're knitting in the round, Helical just means three-dimensional spiral, kind of like a spring. And so when you're talking about springs, um, that is how you do circular knitting. You're basically just spiraling uh, row upon row of spiral upon spiral on top of your knitting as you're knitting in the round. So all circular knitting technically is helical knitting. However, if you want to introduce striping to that, um, Typically, the, the standard way of doing that is doing one round of one color, then switching to a different color, and then uh, finishing the round with that, and then going to another one. That creates the, what they call a jog. So since you're starting a spiral on top of the next row, um, it, it actually creates this jog. Where Helical striped knitting tends to avoid that jog. So if you take a look, this is the beginning of my round. And you can see no differentiation in terms of when it goes from yellow to orange to green to yellow to orange to green to yellow to orange. So this is a case where we're doing three different color stripes and you're avoiding the jog specifically there. However, you're not really eliminating fully the jog because wherever you start, if you can picture these three striped colors, the orange, the green, and the yellow as interwoven helixes or interwoven springs, if you will, um, it's got to have a starting point and an ending, uh, ending point. And so what you find is that the jog just appears one place. So when, I, when you start, for instance, the orange row, you can actually see that there is a jog as it goes from yellow to orange here. But in all future rounds of, of striped knitting, there is no jog. It's kind of uniform until you get again to the top of your work where you're switching back to a solid color of yarn. And you'll see that in this case, the green jogs back up into the yellow, which is kind of expected if you're, if you're considering it like an interwoven spiral or helix, if you will. And so today we're going to talk a little bit about how exactly to do this uh, uh, interwoven three striped helix knitting. Um, technically, I think that's a better way of saying it. Um, we're also going to talk about three different techniques, one for organizing your yarn, another for um, so that it doesn't get as tangled while you're using it. Uh, a second piece in terms of how to um, adjust for the looseness of stitches as you're changing colors because it's a little bit different when it comes to helical knitting. And finally, we're going to talk about um, most people only tell you how to do single rounds, single width stripes of color. So in this case, you're seeing that we've got one round of orange, one round of green, one round of yellow, for instance. And so um, it's only thin stripes. But if you wanted thicker stripes, so for instance, we're going to go through the example where you get a, a, a double thickness of stripe for the orange. Um, you can do that as well. It just requires a slightly different way than you're used to in doing that. So let's go ahead and first of all, show you how to do helical knitting. So let's go ahead and try to create the um, three different color stripes in helical knitting technique. So I've created a swatch right here. It's 24 stitches uh, in the round and I'm going to be doing three different color stripes. So basically how you start is you take the total number of stitches and divide it by the total number of color stripes that you want to do helical knitting wise. And since I'm doing three and 24 is divisible by three, we're going to do eight stitches each in each color. Um, if, if it doesn't go in, um, evenly, if it doesn't divide evenly into your total number of stitches, that doesn't matter much. Um, it, you just need to, um, so for instance, if I had 25 stitches, I would do eight stitches of one color, eight stitches of the next one on my starting round, and nine stitches of the uh, third color. Uh, but in this case, it actually um, goes evenly, so we can go ahead and do that. So I'm going to start off with my main color, which is color yellow, and I'm going to do eight stitches. And that's eight. Then I'm going to take my second color and joining in. I'm 
eight stitches in green. One thing I do suggest is that you weave in your ends for the new colors as you're putting them on, because they will kind of get in the way on the second and third rounds um, and might confuse you as to which is your working yarn versus which is your tail. So now I've done eight stitches in the green. A little bit left of my tail. I do not want that there, so I'm going to snip that off. And then I take my third color, which in this case is orange. And just add it on and start knitting in orange for eight stitches. And again, I'm going to weave in this end as I go along, just so that that end doesn't get in my way or confuse me on the next few rounds. Oops. Sorry, this gets a little floppy. Three. And now I've come back to the beginning of my round. I've put on eight stitches of yellow, eight stitches of green, and eight stitches of orange. At the beginning of your round, you use the same color that you just ended the round with. So since I just ended it with eight stitches of orange, I'm going to do another eight stitches of orange. And now what you see, kind of, is that the next yarn waiting for me is yellow. And as you can see, it's underneath the orange stitch because it's in the row below. You don't twist it. You don't make any things to try to secure it in. You don't even cinch up that sit, stitch. In order to get a, a jogless stripe, you just pick up that yarn and start knitting with it. Since it's right there, it's easy to remember which is which. And I do eight stitches now in yellow on top of the green. And once I'm finished with these eight stitches, you can see that the next colorway that's waiting, the next color that's waiting for me is the green. So I just pick up the green and start knitting eight stitches of green. And again, I don't twist the yarn. I don't have to secure it in um, or um, tuck, uh, tug on that stitch for, at all. You just switch colors. And then when I get to the end of the eight stitches in green, the next color, oh, I, I'm at the beginning of my round. And so since I'm at the beginning of my round, I continue with the last color I just finished and that's green. So I do eight more stitches of green. And when I get to the end of the eight stitches of green, the next colorway waiting for me is orange. So I just pick that up. And so in essence, what you're doing, let me get to the end of this orange section. Is creating an interwoven spiral or helix in this case. <coughs> So as you go from one to the other, so now since this yellow yarn is the next one up, 
in essence, we're just going to ramp that on top of the green stitches so that we can continuously interweave that helix. And as we continue on and on, you're just layering one on top of the other alternately um, by doing, by just picking up the next one that you've been left with. So I'm gonna keep going with this. And um, for one more round, feel free to jump forward to some tips and tricks um, that I have at the end of the video. You can link down in comments to those tips and tricks. Or if you think you've gotten it, um, feel free to um, ask any questions. I'd love to know how you use this um, for your work and um, how successful it was and whether you have any other tips or techniques that you'd like to suggest, um, especially after you've listened to my tips and techniques. So now that you've got the basics of helical knitting down, I wanted to show you three different techniques that will hopefully help you out both in terms of making a neater um, striping in this, but also in terms of how to manipulate this so you get what you want. Um, so the first technique I'm going to show you is this, this way of helical knitting only allows for one round or one thickness round of stripe in your fabric, right? So there's one round of orange, one round of green, one round of yellow, and so on. Um, what if we wanted a thickness of two rounds of orange? Um, most people would say that you can't do that, but in essence, you can. Um, all you need to do is in, increase it to four colors and have two of those colors be sequentially orange in your, in your helical knitting. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like. Since we're still working on the 24 stitch in the round swatch, um, we're gonna switch to, um, instead of dividing our 24 stitches by four, three, we're gonna divide it by four instead. So we're gonna work on six stitches instead of eight stitches like we did in the original um, helical knitting demonstration. So again, I'm gonna start at the beginning of my round. I'm gonna use my main color, which is yellow and knit six. I'm switching over to five needles so that I can have them evenly on four each as I go ahead. So um, that's six in yellow and then I pick up my orange and I'm just going to pick it up from the center of the um, swatch since I never cut that off. And I'm going to knit six stitches of orange. Two, three, four, five, six. Now, since we want a double stripe of orange, um, we want our next layer to be also orange, but it can't be a continuation of this orange. It has to be a separate distinct stripe or helix within the interwoven helixes. So I don't highly recommend this, but I'm gonna start working from the center part of my same ball of orange yarn and using that cast on or add on six stitches of the other side of the orange yarn. And again, I'm going to weave in my stitches so that I don't get confused with that stupid little tail. And then I'm going to switch to the green. So we're going to keep the same order of striping. The only thing different is we're going to have we're going to insert an extra stripe of orange in this in this way of doing it. So now I'm going to switch to green and do six stitches of green. And now we're at the back at uh, the beginning of our round. So just like with the original helix knitting that we did. I'm gonna continue on with the same color that I ended with and do six stitches of green. And then you'll see the next color that comes up is yellow. 
So I just pick up the yellow and do six, six of yellow. And you'll see the next color that comes up is orange because the orange ta tail is left there. So I pick up the orange and knit six of orange. And not surprisingly, when we get to this end of the six stitches of orange, we have another Oops, that's the tail that I didn't want to get confused with. We have another tail of orange that's left. So we knit six stitches of that orange. It's a different end. In this particular case, it's the inside part of my orange ball of yarn. I would highly recommend if you can do this to have two separate balls of any ones that you want to have double stripes of and do six of those. And then you're just gonna continue on doing it the same way, just using the two different orange, consecutive orange stripes as, or six stitches of orange, just done as, um, as two separate colorways, even though they're the same color of yarn. And so I'll continue on with this. And since I ended the round in orange, I'm gonna finish, uh, start the next round. An orange, but I'll continue on with doing this and show you an example of what it looks like. But before I do, I'm going to show you the other two techniques that are um, kind of important in terms of trying to keep your work organized and looking good. The first one is um, how to create the most possible jogla scene. So one of the things that you'll find is when you come to the end of, in this case, a six stitch repeat, um, you'll notice that the yarn that you're about to pick up, in this case, it's gonna be the green yarn, has left a somewhat open, loose stitch there. Um, when you go to start that next stitch, um, just be careful you don't overcompensate by cinching that up. It's not like other in the round knitting when you're working on double points where you have to tighten it up so that you avoid any kind of uh, jog or any kind of laddering in your work. You do need to pull it a little bit tighter, but not much. So you notice I, I hardly did any when I did that. And what that leaves, I'm gonna get to the end of this six row piece. So what happens when you get there is that just by creating that new stitch, that's the first stitch of the new layer of green that's ramped on top of the, the yellow there, it actually pulls that tightly enough where it shows as a normal looking stitch. So you don't have to be too worried about cinching that up or being tight. In fact, you don't, you kind of want to avoid cinching it up too closely because if you do, you'll actually start to show the jog. So the last technique I wanted to talk to you about is just a way of organizing your yarn so that you get them less tangled, especially if you're working with three or more different color stripes. And the way I do that is my working yarn, I always keep to the left-hand side of my work. So since I'm about to um, work the first part of the round, which is in green in this case, I'm gonna knit six in green. And then when I'm finished, I move that green over to the right side and now the next one I have is yellow. So I keep make sure that the yellow is to the left. It's six of yellow. And since my next two colors are gonna be orange, I move the yellow over to the right. And I have the orange to the, to the left. That's six of the orange one. And 
six of the orange two. And since that's the beginning of my round, I keep that to the left and knit six more of orange two. And then move orange over to the right. And that means green, which is on the left, is the next one to work on. And so that keeps not only your different colors untangled, but even the, the one that I'm pulling off two different strands, one from the inside and one from the outside, it still keeps allows me to keep that untangled from the rest of them, which is a great way of, then I only have to untangle itself. And, um, and as you can see, now that I've gotten a few rounds done, the green is a single stripe, but the orange is now a double stripe. And so you can actually increase the width of your stripes, even with helical knitting, even if people tell you otherwise. So thanks for um, spending some time with me on this tutorial. If you have any questions, please leave them in comments um, or contact me if you have my contact information, I'd be more than happy to help. Um, also, it's, it would be very much appreciated if you could like this video and or subscribe if you haven't subscribed to the knitting tutorial or the knitting proficiency tutorial playlist and you'll be notified every time that one of the new videos comes out. Thanks again, and hopefully we'll see you soon.